how to pass the USMLE step 1 in 2024. This video will be your one-stop tutorial to teach you everything you need to know to pass step 1 from the first time. We will discuss the best resources that you can use to study for step 1, how to best use these resources, how to create study plan and study schedule, study techniques, assessment tools, and how to take notes. For those interested in one-on-one -on -one tutoring to build an individualized study plan and study schedule, choose the best resources for their specific situation, and explain difficult concepts that might be hard to understand on your own, go ahead and check out our US Mary tutoring service that is 100% satisfaction guarantee, which means if you're not happy, you'll get your money back. And make sure to stick out until the end of this video because I will be sharing with you a USMLE step one checklist that will help you ace your exam. And now let's get started. We'll get started with the resources to study for step one. Choosing the resources will depend on your baseline knowledge of the topics covered in step one, such as anatomy, biochemistry, microbiology, pathology, etc. So if you feel you studied these materials well in medical school, even if you forgot most of this information, the resources that you will pick for your studying will be slightly different than someone who did not study these materials well while in medical school. Another tip I personally adopt when studying for big exams like step 1 and step 2 CK is being minimalist in picking these resources. And by that I mean picking the smallest number of resources that will help you achieve your goal. And our goal here in the step 1 exam is to pass the step 1 from the first time but also build a good foundation to A step to CK and get a high score on that exam. So you have to ask yourself, what is the minimum number of resources that will help you achieve these two goals? However, you don't always know the answer to this question because you need to reach the end of your preparation to know what was the minimum number of resources that would have helped you pass the exam. That's why I recommend following the minimalist approach in studying for the exam and going for the resource that is most reliable and most people have used which is a question bank called UWorld. And you will find many YouTubers and many tutors disagree with that opinion because they believe you have to start preparing with books and then after the books you go to first aid and then you keep UWorld until the end of your preparation. But that is the total opposite of the minimalist approach I want you to follow. Not because I don't believe that studying all these resources will not help you pass the exam. It will probably help you pass the exam but the question is how much time do you need to go through all these resources to achieve the same outcome which is passing the exam. Remember you have limited time in your medical school and from the time you finish medical school until you start your residency. So you want to minimize the gaps as much as you can so you can work on other aspects of your application such as research, US clinical experience and your match application. That's why you will always find in every aspect of your life, everything you're trying to do, time is always in the denominator. The less time something takes, the more time you have to achieve other things in your life. So after this philosophical introduction about the value of time and why you should minimize your resources, the reason why I recommended a question bank and especially you all is for multiple reasons. First, you're studying in the exam style. You're studying in a question and answer which has multiple advantages such as active recall which reinforces your memory. You're studying in the exam style so when the exam comes the questions are not something new. And also most question banks such as UWorld have an explanation to the question. So you're not just solving questions you are studying the explanation of that question. So now you transformed your studying from relying on a book dry information without a question and answer style to a question and answer style which is similar to the exam but then you're studying why this question was right, why this uh, choice was wrong, why this choice was correct and this all reinforces your memory and retention of information. So if you are someone who has good baseline knowledge from their medical school, even if you forgot the majority of this information, I recommend you start with a question bank like UWorld and don't worry about how many questions you get right or wrong. The purpose here is to learn not to assess yourself. But make sure to study the explanation really well because that is now your book. And by the way, I have a detailed video on how to study UWorld for step one and I'll leave the link for that video in the cards above and in the description below. Now some might say a challenge to this approach is that I don't understand the explanation of this question. And this is a challenge you will face in a few questions. And there are multiple ways to go around it. The first approach is to get a tutor who can explain to you these difficult concepts you're having difficulty understanding. So each week you put all these questions that you had difficulty with and discuss them with a tutor who can explain things to you and you can save yourself time. Another approach is to ask ChatGPT. So you can put this question and the concept that you did not understand 
and ask ChatGPT to explain it to you. And the way to do that is copy paste this explanation and then type in simple plain language what portions of that you did not understand and write uh, please explain in a first year medical student level. And you can talk to ChatGPT as a human, ask them about what you understand, what you don't understand, and hopefully that will lead to understanding of that concept. And finally, if you're still having difficulty understanding that, you can go to primary resources like a full anatomy book if you're having a difficulty understanding anatomy question or full physiology book if you're having difficulty understanding a physiology concept and look in that specific portion of the book for the explanation of this concept. So if you're having, for example, difficulty understanding physiology of uh, the renal system, don't read the whole physiology book if you're only having difficulty understanding small concept. Go and read more about that specific concept or search Google, read articles. So this is more like a targeted studying rather than studying book from beginning to end. And it's way more effective. Now for those who don't have baseline knowledge in their medical school, I still recommend they start with UWorld. And here if they're finding that the percentage of questions that they are uh, having difficulty understanding is a lot, like let's say over 50%, here in that situation they have to take a different approach. But if these concepts are new to you, but you're still able to understand it, you know, after you read the explanation, you understand what this question about, you study it and you're good, in that case you don't need another resource. So for those who are having a big problem, you know, not only a few questions they're having difficulty understanding, they have like over half of the questions they're not able to understand what's going on, the tutor is still a very viable option. Another option here is to go and study a video resource. I think videos are a phenomenal way to studying. And in the future, I think all these textbooks will be replaced with video materials. And I actually made a detailed online comprehensive course for the biostatistics part of the USMLE exams. That doesn't only cover the biostatistics questions, but also covers the abstracts and the drug ads. Because I really believe that biostatistics need someone to explain concepts to you not just word explanations. So if you wanna check that course out, go ahead and click on the link in the card above or the description below. And this course is also 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if you're not satisfied, you'll get your money back. So video resources are a great way to study a whole material, but most people have difficulty in one subject or two subjects, not the whole thing. So for example, if you're having difficulty understanding pathology, you might consider studying pathoma, watching pathoma videos, and then coming back to your old questions. If you're having difficulty uh, with biochemistry, for example, go and watch biochemistry videos or read the biochemistry uh, short book and then come back to you all. If you're having difficulty understanding a lot of questions in all the subjects, here you might consider the approach of going through books first and then coming back to you all or studying with a tutor or with a video lecture style. But just be mindful of the time that might take. And don't be OCD with the amount of information you need to know. It's fine if you don't understand a small portion of the explanation, but you understand the majority of it. It's fine if you miss few questions here and there. Remember, the exam is hundreds of questions. It's not a question or two. So even if you miss few questions, you'll still score well. So you need to find that balance between performing well and not spending so much time. Of course, another popular and very useful resource for studying step one is first aid. However, what so many people do not know is that first aid is a review book. It's not an explanation book, which means if you start studying first aid as the first resource without good baseline knowledge, you will be very frustrated because you'll probably not understand anything they have there. So that's why I either recommend studying first aid alongside you world. So you study a subject from you world and then you study it from first aid, or studying first it completely after you're done with your world. And I prefer the second way because in this case, you would study the concepts from your world, you would do spaced repetition by doing first aid afterwards. You would have some time to forget that information and when you study it from first aid, that would act as a reinforcement for your memory and transform that knowledge from short term to long term. And I also have a detailed video on how to study first aid for step one and I'll leave the link for that video in the description below. And of course, there are many, many books and question banks that are available for step one studying. But I recommend using these resources on demand if needed to fill a gap in your knowledge. Now let's say you picked the right resources and now you wanna build your study plan and schedule which is essential in you acing any exam. The first question you have to decide on is how many days do you have until the exam day? Some students have that date flexible and they can study as much as they like while others 
have certain deadlines and certain times that they need to do rotations, they need to do uh, graduate from medical school, so they have more tight schedule. So first decide on these number of days and then you have certain resources that you pick. So you can divide these resources on the days available. So if you have a thousand pages to study and you have only 10 days, so you divide these resources that you picked on the days available. I also recommend you build a study plan for each day. Uh, summarizing what time you'll be waking up, how many breaks you'll be taking, how long is each break, uh, when you'll be working out, when you'll be going out. That detailed plan will help you stay focused and try to achieve as much as you can every day. And I also have a detailed video on how to make a study plan and study schedule that I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Now let's talk about assessment tools, which are a very unique feature, especially for those who are not familiar with the step exams. Assessment tools are really good in predicting your score. So that's why it's essential to start them early on to see where you stand. And then you can do multiple of them across your studying period to see how you're progressing. A common misunderstanding is that some people save them until the last day of their exam. But in that case, they won't help you much in predicting where your problems are, where are your mistakes and how to fix them. So that's why I recommend doing the first assessment at the beginning of your study just to get a baseline understanding of where you stand and then do one each month and maybe save the last one or two self-assessments toward the end of the studying, the last two weeks. Common self-assessments for the step one are the MBMEs, UL self-assessment one, two and three and the free sample from the USMLE. Now let's talk about few study techniques that can help you ace your exam. One mistake I see students make over and over is passive learning, which means they just read the information assuming that it's just going into the long-term memory. And that's a big misunderstanding. When you just read the information, this is exactly what some people call the illusion of learning. So how can you do active learning? You have to try retrieving that information. So if you just read a paragraph and you're studying it, maybe cover it now, and try to recall that information. Here you can really test if you actually learned that information or you were just reading it. Another way of active learning is trying to summarize that information you just studied in a question and answer style. And next time when you come to review it, you would see the question but you would not see the answer. So your brain starts searching for the information and in that case you're trying to solidify it and turn it more into long term. Trying to summarize that information to yourself is another great way of active learning. So after you study the paragraph, you try to tell yourself again about this information as if you're presenting it to someone. And in that case, you'll really discover the gaps in your knowledge and you can come back to that paragraph to read what portions did you miss. And finally, spaced repetition. This is a great way to solidify your memory and transform more short term into long term. And spaced repetition means not reviewing the information you just studied immediately afterwards. Give it some time in between. So if you just studied the paragraph about myocardial infarction and you feel that you understood it well, you did the summarization to yourself or you summarized it in a question and answer style, don't just go and review it an hour afterward. There is no point of doing that. Give it some time to be forgotten. And when you review it again, that would have way more value in you remembering it in the future. And there are multiple ways to do space repetition and the frequency in which you repeat information. Anki is one way of doing that. I personally prefer to go over a resource after I finish another. So if I'm studying U World, I go through the whole U World and then I go to another resource and then I review U World. But some people prefer the Anki algorithm and the frequency they present the information you put in there. And the final point I want to talk about in this video is taking notes. This is another controversial topic among YouTubers and USMLE tutors. I am a strong advocate of taking notes. However, by taking notes, I don't mean go to the library, buy a notebook and start writing a full book of your notes. On the contrary, I feel this way takes so much time and is not an efficient way of taking notes. I prefer the electronic method in which you can copy paste information from the resource you are studying into that electronic notebook. And then when the time comes for reviewing, you can review this information rather than having to go through the whole question bank Again, another way of taking notes is making flashcards. Flashcards are a great way of taking notes in a question and answer style. Also, when you're studying question bank, you can usually flag certain questions that you would like to review and that can help you pick the questions that you would like to review. I personally used the electronic notebook where I summarize the information from certain questions, the part that I don't know in that notebook electronically, so it doesn't take time for me to write. 
and I also flagged certain questions that I wanted to go over. And I personally did not only flag the questions I got wrong. Sometimes I got a question wrong, but there was only one information I needed to know from that question and I put it on the notebook already so there is no point of me repeating that wrong question. I also flagged the right questions that I might have gotten the answer by chance. Sometimes there are questions you get right but you were so lost between two options and you picked one by chance and it turned out to be correct. So that might be also a question you might need to review. So that's why flag questions that you feel you would have benefit from reviewing the question itself not just the information that is inside. And as I said, if you're having any difficulty understanding certain concepts, you need one-on-one -on -one tutor for multiple hours, for one hour to build a study plan, study schedule, help you pick the resources. We have a great USMLE tutoring service that also will give you access to your tutor on WhatsApp. So you can text them about any questions you have, even if you don't want to schedule a session with them. And if you want to chat to our customer support team about our different USMLE tutoring services, go ahead and schedule a free consultation with our customer support team and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. And if you want to check the different packages we have for our USMLE tutoring, go ahead and click on the link in the cards above or the link in the description below. Now, if you'd like to get the USMLE step one checklist I told you about, go ahead and click on the link in the description below and you will receive an email. You need to confirm your subscription and then you will receive the checklist delivered to your email. Sometimes this email might go to your junk folder, so make sure to check there if you don't receive it within one hour. Now, if you have any USMLE step one tips that you would like to share with me and our other viewers, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. If you find any value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with your colleague who's also studying for their step one. Thank you everyone so much for watching and good luck on your exam.